I'm going to try this again. Oh. So, I was lying. I didn't even know. Nobody's, everybody's responding now. Sorry about that, everybody. So, I'll just wait till everybody comes back. Like I said, we're on today live at 5 with Stephanie Stevens for Pageant Talk. And we're going to answer some of the tough questions that the, um, the potential contestants and newcomers have for entering the pageant system. Now, we know a lot of the girls um, will be entering the contest to sort of get opportunity and get back to work. So, can you hear me, Perry? Send me a sign or something. Because I'm just waiting to see if everybody comes back in. And I had a good thing going there. At the beginning, there was a lot of people. Lord, they didn't mess me up, Facebook. Oh, I guess we're... Are we live, Perry? Are we okay? Okay. Well, anyway, I'm going to just continue on. And I think Facebook saves the shows, actually. Um, so the, you guys you know, have to watch the first two segments to see how I set the show up. Like I said, today we're on Live at Five talking pageant talk and talking to some of the divas that um, have won pageants and that have entered pageants. And like I said, I had my first pageant in 1988. When I entered Miss Club Shadows and I won that pageant out of 11 professional contestants. So, um, and then I decided to enter Miss International when I got to Toronto to introduce me into the um, Toronto um, gay scene. And I ended up being second runner up in the Miss International pageant. Now, for me, entering a pageant takes a lot of preparation, a lot of dedication, a lot of hard work. And, um, and it takes a lot of hard work. But... As I've noticed in the last few years, as I did my homework, just so you ladies know that this is not just about me up here thinking I'm a diva and a pageant queen. It's, this is to educate me and others who plan on entering the pageant market again to um, up to date me, to make sure that I am current with what's actually happening in the pageant scene. I don't want to be a cookie cutter because I we're going to talk about that too in the show. Being a cookie cutter in pageants. Um, I saw that trending a lot on YouTube about a lot of queens were upset because of the cookie cutter um, format that most pageants have. Um, now, if another question is, is if you don't win, let's say... You've been going to the pageant system three, four, five years. You don't win, but yet you keep placing. But yet you're not placing where you think you should be placing because you um, weren't prepared or you missed something. Those are questions that I want to ask the pageant queens. And I also want to ask them, how do you feel when you lose? How do you really feel? And... Are you optimistic about going back? What can you, and what can you do different the time when you didn't win or place? What are you going to do different? And what did you learn that will make you want change whatever it is that you didn't do, you thought you didn't do the first time right? What is it? So, like I said, um, today's show is pageant talk. So, I'm just on to just ask a few questions to pageant divas about their experience um, in the pageant world. Whether you're male or female, I just want to know, <clears throat> what advice can you give to up-and-coming potential newcomers and contestants and people like myself who are a little bit older and want to enter pageants? Another question. How old is too old to be in a pageant? And do you think older queens um, can um, be current with what's going on with the young um, 
gay bars, gay bars and gay, young gay movement, if there's any. I don't think there's a young gay movement. I mean, we, we, we set the trend for movement and that there's no movement now with the young children. <clears throat> They've come to a complete halt. <laughs> well, anyway, like I said, is now, how important for you pageant divas out there, how important, hi Gary, how important is it for pageant queens and pageant potentials to be focused. And how do you get focused if you don't have enough money, you know you have the talent, nobody, there's no real support system, but yet you know you can do well in whatever system you have chosen to be in. Now, that is a really um, great question for pageant queens out there. Hi, America. Black. Hi, Demetrius. Hi, Gary. Now, another question is, is that when you enter the contest and you don't win, how do you feel about your, what is the actual, how do you actually feel about the fact that you didn't win or you didn't place and there you are, you've been, been there four or five times. Now, that is another question I want to ask. You've, cost, you've been in the pageant five, six, seven, ten years, and you haven't won. You've constantly placed. What is it that you think you are missing when it comes to um, you not placing in the top five or the top three? Um, what is it that you think you're missing? And... Are you constantly willing to spend money year after year? Hi, Grant. Hi, Garrett. I know, Fantasia's been in Miss Continental for 17 years. I don't know if she's ever placed. Has she ever placed? Now, when you're in a contest that long, what is it that keeps bringing you back when you know that the, the, the pageant has changed over the years and the queens are younger, more energetic, and you're getting older? So what is it that you can do being an older queen and like a lot of the other older season queens in the contest that have won, what is it that you are actually missing? That would be a good question to ask Fantasia. Um, because she has been in the past in a long time, and I've seen her trying to, you know, do her thing. Hi, Garrett. Hi, Byron. I've seen her trying to do her thing um, on in Miss Continental. Now, I would like to ask her, pageants are very expensive. We know that. They're expensive. And they're very mind-draining, energy-draining, because you constantly want to be better. You constantly, even after you put your package together, you want to change it. Because now you've seen whether this queen is in the pageant or that queen is in the pageant, and you need to step your game up. So when is it that you think, do you think pageant queens should stick to their original ideas of what they had in the pageants, or do you think they should conform to the cookie cutter pageant format? Because you know, most pageants have a look. And generally, all the girls that win in these pageants have that same look, whether you're black or white. Even I watch Miss America and um, Miss Universe and all that. Whether the people are black or white, they still have that same frame and that same kind of cookie cutter look. And I've heard that from several queens um, sending me messages about the show I was going to do today. I know a lot of the girls are didn't want to come on because they don't want to put themselves on the spot. I'm not here to put anybody on the spot about the pageants. I'm just asking questions so I can be informed and get good advice on me entering the pageant system and others who are potentially thinking about entering. So 
if the girls are on and they can give us some good advice about pageant system, I want to understand how they get in focus. How do you get in focus when you live in Toronto and the contest is in Chicago? Now, it would be different if the contest was in your own hometown. It's like playing basketball. When you're in your own hometown, nine times out of ten, you're going to win because you have that rally and that support. But when you have to carry all of this stuff with you to do these pageants, which is mind draining from the beginning, from you getting in the cab or your car to get to the airport, dealing with airport, whatever it is, there's security and this getting on the plane, paying for extra baggage because you know us queens, we have tons of luggage. Connie, placed in the top 10 you think, oh, and I think the top five. Oh, okay. So what, what, Demetrius, what do you think, why do you think Connie went from the top ten to the top five? What did she learn? What what, what was the trick? What, what did she change? Did she change something? Hi, Perry. Yes, I'm just did. Oh, to be fish. Well, most of the girls want to look as realistic as possible. I think that drag, if it's a drag pageant, if it's a drag pageant, I think you first and foremost should look like a woman. That's true. You should look like a woman. But secondly, I think that you should, it should be drag because that's what the pageant is. I don't, I, I understand you being fishy. We understand everybody wants to be fishy, including me. I want to be as fishy as possible. But at the end of the day, when do we lose that theatrical, that theatrical um, thing that should be in the show? That performance, that drag, you know, the show business part of it. It's now, the girl, the pageants now are almost coming like the real Miss America or the real Miss Universe. We understand that we as an LGBT pronoun community and a movement going on for gay rights and equality for gays and lesbians and all of us that are included within that realm of pronouns, we understand that. But when do we lose our sense of this is drag? We understand we want to be a part of the world and a part of what's going on in the world. But when do we lose? Drag is better when it's drag. Because you're getting, you're getting um, the best out of people. When, when the girls are focusing on being fish, excuse my language for saying that, but you guys understand. When they're focusing on being as feminine and as convincing as possible, they lose that entertain part of that entertainment factor where they should be um, focusing on their talent and their walking and their poise and their interviews things that should be more important in a pageant this is this is just my opinion now I want to know is it really important can you really win a pageant just being by yourself. Is that possible? I've seen a few girls do it, but I also see the tricks why they did it, how they won. And it wasn't that they pulled tricks. They actually did something that they were just good at. And they won the pageant over all these other girls that were bringing out these big sets and costumes and all this stuff. Now, another question for the pageant queens. I have so many questions. I'm sorry, ladies. I have so many questions for you ladies. Um, it was in her mindset and her package. Oftentimes, I think her um, entourage may be the ones who have been the reason for reduction in points, not being totally polished, or maybe their behavior. Well, you know, that's true. Because when you take a whole entourage of people to anywhere, no matter where you go, even to a club, somebody is going to act up and the club's turned out. No matter, I mean, you can't go to a, anywhere with a group of people 
and you're supposed to have your mind focused either on having a good time in the club or you focusing on winning the pageant. There's, take, it takes that one spark of that person who is either helping you that don't like a certain person that is either at the pageant or they've had some kind of an altercation with just that a group of people and now it's come to a head because you all you guys know you're going to be at the pageant together. And so this is where the drama comes in. And so this eventually falls on that potential contestant. Not fair at all. Okay, Rita Marlowe placed top three at Continental as, as a solo talent. I actually saw that. That was amazing. She was amazing. And I saw um, Chantel DeMarco. I thought she was flawless. She was flawless through the whole pageant. I, you know, I'm not talking about any of the other girls. I'm just saying what I saw. I thought she was flawless. Um, there's so many of the... Why... Um, Demetrius, why do you think the pageant queens um, that constantly get in the top 10 and the top 5 don't win? Some of them, the ones that don't win, and they keep coming back and they keep placing basically in the same order. What is it that that person is missing? Which category do you think they are, from your just observation, which um, category do you think most of the queens are um, having problems with that constantly come back on a constant basis? Talent. Talent, you think? I just want to know because I find it rather hard, even when I had a um, continental prelim here many, many years ago, um, I found that the girls were lacking a lot in the talent portion because they had to bring so much to, let's say, if they're coming from out of town and you're having to cross borders or just the fact of you're having to rely on people or rely on your car to get you where you need to go. You're right. People do get sick and tired of not winning. I understand that, Demetrius. They get sick and tired of not winning, and they, they, their friends all act up because they feel that that person who won or the person that were in the top three don't, didn't deserve to be there. But when you sit out front and you're a panel of judges, I really do believe that you're getting a fair shake. And it's up to you to make sure that you get your fair shake. So um, a lot of the queens, I have noticed a lot. Before pageants, the queens used to be happy. And I understand politics. I know politics. Let me tell you something about politics. Toronto is full of politics and this gay club scene madness, trust me, and, and, and a lot of other things around here. Luckily, I don't have to worry about that now. I had to worry about that before. I don't have to worry about that now. But politics do play a big role in pageants, I think. Because interview, question and answer, is where most of the girls, I have watched most of the girls sit back and don't say anything in question and answer, I mean in interview. And then when they get on the spot for question and answer, it's like you already know you've been up here four or five times. How is it that you don't know um, how to answer a question. You're now at a critical point in the contest, which is question and answer, and you can't answer um, with a positive and definitive answer. It all, it's always like the girls get stuck. But, you know, I have noticed in Miss Continental Elite, I guess this is why. I'm not picking out any pageants. I'm just saying the ones that I have watched and I did a little bit of homework on. I noticed that Miss Continental Elite, maybe the girls have clear and definitive answers because they're older and smarter or they're just older and they're seasoned. And you get better answers from the older divas and showgirls and performers in the contest than you do the young um, 
ones who think that I'm everything that they're looking for facially, body-wise. I might not have the best talent, but um, I better win. Now, Dimitri is, like you said, question and answer. A lot of girls get stuck on question and answer, and I can understand the pressure. I can. And, I'm, and you, trust me, if I plan on doing something, I understand the pressure of me getting up there on the spot and having to answer this question and be convincing and realistic as possible about um, delivering the um, questions the right way. I mean, delivering the answer the right way. Um, because that is, you're at a critical point in the contest. You're either going to make it or break it. So, um, now, another question is, is when you lose the year, that year, and then it, you're, you're mad, you storm out, your friends are mad, nobody wants to work with you, the, you, you work in the clubs with the queens, you don't want to talk to them, you don't really want to do the prelims anymore. Then, all of a sudden, in the middle of five, six months, you start rethinking. You start seeing the promo for this pageant and that pageant and this pageant. Then you say, oh, maybe I'll enter this and maybe I'll enter that. But then you never forget about the fact that you lost the pageant that you cared so much about. So now you start rethinking, nah, I'm going to go back again. Being alternate, many of the girls can't talk. Oh, I you you know what you you're so true you it's you're so true Demetrius a lot of the girls can't talk I'm I'm lucky that people pay me to talk <laughs> that's why I'm a comedian um and I'm trying to you know do a couple of other things right now Hey Pamela how are you now um it's straight because the girls like I said before focus on their looks if you notice on their lives I mean including me uh, but I'm only sitting and talking, so I'm not like I'm performing. We focus on the breast line or being sexual in a sense or um, being half naked. This is what gets the girls the attention because these the girls aren't used to real structure. Very few of the queens that enter the pageants, the divas or the performers who enter the pageants have very little structure in their life. Most of the girls don't get up until 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Most of them only have that nighttime gig or job in the gay bars or the or, or drag cabaret or um, events or whatever it is that the queens do. But most of them have no structure. So when you think about the fact that you get up at 4 o'clock, this is why everybody does all the enhancements. Most of the queens do them for the pageants or to outdo the next transsexual or to look as convincing as possible to enter the contest. The contest really is a real reason why the girls have done all this silicone and all of these enhancements. I ain't, I'm, I'm not saying nothing bad about that because it's all good. Whatever makes them feel good, good. And it works perfect for the pageant. But when they focus so much on getting the silicone breasts, getting the hips, getting all this stuff. And the reality of it is, is that pageant is once a year. That pageant is once a year. So... This means to tell me that if you don't have a real job or a real career in drag or performance art or whatever it is that you want to call it, show being a showgirl, if you don't have a real job, what is the purpose of all of these altercations for a pageant and not with the way you live every day? Now, if you're going to live like that every day and go to work and be a part of society and make yourself feel good by buying yourself a house, a car, and having a, 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 a relationship, things that you have been asking for for a long time. But I noticed that the girls get on there and they're doing that same arguing about who looks more fishy. Pageants aren't about you just looking fishy. You've got to put more into pageants. I, it, for me, I can't believe that um, judges would sit up there and go, oh, that one's more fishy, and the rest of them can go home. 
That just doesn't seem fair to me. But I do understand politics, like you said, Demetrius. Oftentimes, the girls um, do not pay attention to the criteria. Many come in as if they, if they can't tell them anything and are not teachable. True. That is true. Most of the girls I have watched online, they have so much attitude. And it's like, I, I couldn't stop laughing because I saw this. I'm just going to say this one comment about what this, this will pertain to the question you just said. I saw this one queen lashing out at the other. Trans, she was lashing out more at the transsexuals, but being very demeaning to the boys who are drag queens. And she kept being angry about, she was angry about the fact that a boy won the contest over a trans woman, a trans person, and the contest wasn't about that. The contest had a title, Miss Whatever It Is, the pageant is, and that person won the pageant, but she had views on that, but there was a queen watching her show that told her that she needed, she had a perfect body, but a really nasty attitude. The queen told her about her apartment. She told her, you should not be on live talking live about anything until you clean up your place. That's what she told her. She told her, she said, how could you talk to somebody about anything when you're, where you're sitting at? That room is a disaster. And it was, it was the funniest thing. I couldn't stop laughing because when I looked at it and I thought, and yes, you're on there cursing everybody out about this person won the pageant. And then you, your room and the where you live is disgusting. They do not, and the girls do not study previous pageants. Um, they don't watch any of the videos from the prior, uh, or even go attend and see what goes on in the game and how the game is played. That's true. A lot of the girls don't because I think, that, like you said, a lot of the girls don't have their own talent. They don't have their own thing they want to do. And if they're watching what some other girl is doing and the girl is similar to them, they try to steal the idea with just a couple of different beat bops of the music, changing the music around a little bit. Hi, Perry. That's right. You got to carry yourself like a lady at all times. This is really important. No matter what it is in life that you're doing, people are always going to say the negative thing, mainly when it comes to transsexuals and, and, and drag queens, because they, they always people always think drag queens are truckers and men with beards and all this kind of stuff. And then they think of transsexuals as either hookers or um, drug addicts. Um, expendable. They think these people are expendable and um, all this kind of stuff. So it's... The girls have got to really start doing what the old school girls did. That is the problem, I think, Demetrius. The old school girls were just smart. They were very smart. By They worked from the trenches, so they knew when to keep their mouth closed. They knew all the hard work it took to be in pageants. It takes a lot of energy to be in a pageant. Trust me, I was going to school, I was going to university, and I was trying to do Miss Club Shadows. Do you know how stressful that was to me? And I was trying to work and make money. And at the time, I wasn't a total, um, I wasn't doing shows a lot. I had never done that much. I had only been doing the contest. But I wanted to enter that pageant because I wanted the opportunity to perform in the clubs with the other girls. I never... I thought I was better than anybody. I walk into a contest or a show just being me. I just do what I do. And a lot of girls can't do that. They can't do that. When they go in the pageant, they all know each other. And they all know each other either from the hookup lines or, the, or whatever service. And this service and that service. You know what I mean, Demetrius. So, but um, who doesn't look real? Who does look real? And they all walk in like, okay, well, I got the pageant. I didn't won. I didn't this. And then when they don't win, then they want, like you said, they want to fight and they want to tear the place up. Um, now, where 
do you start after you've lost the pageant? Where do you start? What do you think, Demetrius? Where should the girls restart? What, like, let's just say Fantasia. She's been in the pageant 17 years, like you said. The conversation is not about Fantasia, but let's just say, because you told me she's been in the pageant 17 years and she's never won. Where does she start if she plans? Now she's 17 years older than what she was before. And it's great that a lot of the contests now offer different categories to different age groups of queens that... Um, are in the business now. They can't figure out by anything else and make up points and talent. Oh, I know. Okay. Now, most focus on the talent. Yeah, I, you, you're right. Most focus on the talent. They can buy a gown from anywhere. Now, but why is it that Almost all of the talent competitions, even no matter what competition, pageant competition I have watched and I've done my homework on, they all look the same. Oh, they're all the back page girls. Oh, okay. And they know each other. <laughs> you know. I, Demetrius, I'm not here. You know, the girls have got to make the money somehow. I know that we, we, I can always say you should go out and get a job and do this here and do that there. But I just, I have a real sense of um, not getting into people's business. But I do know the girls do things um, to make money um, for pageants and shows and, 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 and gowns and all this stuff. But that's okay. I mean... They're trying to, they're living their lives, and um, I'm not, I, I don't really want to talk about um, that kind of stuff because the show, that is a dark part of the, that's a dark side of the pageant, which I saw um, a couple of trailers on YouTube. I'm not going to say which ones they are, but I saw them, and they were talking about the dark side of pageants, and they mentioned the escort services and the, 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 the maybe drug dealing and just certain things that queens were tied up in that they were trying to get money to do these contests and um, and stuff like that. But I don't. For me, I'm not. I, I don't live on the dark side of the pageant systems and stuff like that. And not that I have a lot of money, but I just want to have a fair shake. And I want others to have a fair shake when they decide to enter the pageants. And what it is that they're missing that they should fix before they decide to enter again. And another thing, Demetrius, do you think queens should take some time off from pageants in between? If they haven't won, let's say Fantasia has been in the pageant 17 years do you think she should take a break and maybe enter one of the other contests with the older queens? What is your favorite part of the contest, um, Demetrius? Hi, girl. Hi. What is your favorite part of the any pageant contest? What's the what's your favorite? Category. Can you hear me? If anybody out there can hear me, send me some signs, some love, some something. Are we still live? Well, it says we're live here. Now, oh, okay. I've watched Miss Connie A.K. Fantasia go for Continental to win in a local pageant and or help her daughters win pageants. Now, do you think she should take a time off from pageants if you haven't won? Yes. Okay. And rethink the whole pageantry. What's your favorite part, Byron? What, 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 what's your favorite part of the contest? Where do, and also another question. Where do you think the girls should really focus their attention? Where should we focus our attention? If we plan on being a potential contestant in one of the big contests, where should we focus our attention? We know the, the package is huge. The, the categories are a lot. So you have a lot to think about. And then you have to think about 
the fact that you have to travel from one city to the next city, and that is another package in itself. And then trying to get yourself established when you get in that city with your hotel, your transportation, being on time for the contest, making sure that you don't miss anything with the interviews. This is a lot of stuff. What is your favorite category, Demetrius or Brian? Which, which is your favorite category? What do you think the girls should focus on the most? Mm hmm. You're right. The gown and hair. A lot. I have watched a lot of the evening gown competitions. And for some reason, the girls seem rushed. If you ever watch Miss Universe or Miss America, they're not rushed. These girls, from I understand there's a lot of contestants. We understand that. But it seems like how can you feel like a diva if you're rushed? The, the evening gown is supposed to be the most glamorous portion of the contest. Now, but yet, you, when you see the girls, they run up. They're, they're not even on the stage for a minute with the gown. And I think, that not that they should be out there a long time, but that is um, something that needs to be addressed. That's my favorite part, too. Evening gown, question and answer. Talents are talents can range in different forms um, all over the place. So, um, but basically, I have noticed in the last few years, and doing my little homework um, with the with with the contest, I have noticed that a lot of the girls do the same thing, but just with different music. Um, but my favorite part of the contest is evening gown and question and answer. Now. What is more acceptable? I see a lot of these questions online. Do the girls wear fabric gowns or do they wear beaded gowns, rhinestone gowns? What is more acceptable in a pageant? Can fabric gowns win a pageant? What do you think, Demetrius? Do you think a pageant gown can win a pageant? I mean, um... A fabric gown. Because I know for certain contests, you need to have a certain image. And certain contests have this image to where everything looks rich. So you need to look rich. But what if you don't have all that kind of money, but yet you can sew really well? And you use a fabric gown. Do you think this can work for you, for for some contests? Or do you think everybody's looking for the bling? Demetrius or Joni? Demetrius also, can you hear me? Who do you think who do you think is great role models in the world of pageantry. Just throw me out a couple of names. People you think have made a real difference. National pageant winners, they travel across the country and uh, must represent well, which is they should because they now have a great opportunity to educate and make great money and be part, be a real, having a real impact on the LGBT pronoun community and other communities that look at us in maybe a not so good light. That's great when you're a, when you're a national pageant um, winner, but you need to make sure that you do something with the title. You can't just show up in the city that one time and you never go back there again. I I see that a lot with a. Reigning queens go to these clubs one time and they're never booked again in the clubs or they don't even go back to these cities. Now that means that they have a real disconnect with that part of the LGBT pronoun community that probably some of the girls um, that are there um, would learn a lot from her coming there a lot and teaching them. <laughs> The, 
The badges must not look many made. <laughs> well, that's true. That's true. Um, now, for me, that's the only I, I ask because, um, of course, I like bling. You, I'm a diva. I like to be shining. I like to be lighting it up. Now, what is it that, what role models do you think have really made a real difference? Just throw out a couple of names that have made it not just a difference in the pageantry system, just have made people that we should probably be talking to more regularly. Do you recommend any past um, pageant divas, queens that have made a real difference and that the girls could learn a lot from and people that they might be afraid to talk to or they're afraid to perform around or with me I'm not afraid, I'm not afraid to perform in front of nobody I'm, I'm just an entertainer all over so I don't care who's in the house if Michael Jackson was in I get right on the stage after him and do my thing I could care less. But a lot of the girls are scared when they go to contests and they see certain um, performers or entertainers or queens and they're scared because when they see them, they automatically think, okay, she's going to win or that one's going to win. Now, can you just throw up a couple of names of queens you think have made a difference? Because for me, it's about making a difference in the end. Yes, you're fabulous and you won the pageant, you're great and all that. But what is it that you've done can do for your community? Your community, the, the, the pageant system is a really important thing when it comes to community. It's almost like we haven't connected because I see so many different pageants, Demetrius, that are um, so disconnected from each other. And some of them are in the same state. You're in the same state. But yet, there's such a divide that that part of, of, let's say, one was running the Pride Committee, and then one was running the nightclubs. There's such a divide. If How do you connect these things? Um, for me, my favorite pageant queen, I'm going to be honest, my favorite pageant queen when I was grew up in Fort Lauderdale was Dana Douglas. Dana Douglas and Tiffany Ariagas had a real impact on on my train of thought. I love them because they look realistic. They had talent. They put a lot of work and effort into just being fabulous. Tasha Long is amazing. And Mimi Marks, oh yes. Mimi Marks is fabulous. Yes, ma'am. Tommy Ross. These people have made a real impact on the drag and the um the entertainment community, and it's done very well um, helping with the trans um, um, movement as well. That's right. Fantasia, Freddie Fantasia. Yes, these girls, I, I've watched their contest. They are perfections and perfectionists at what they do. I have watched Mimi Marks for years, and she is awesome. Tommy Ross has a mind of a genius. I'm just, I'm just not, not that I'm trying to pick anybody out, but she's just smart and educational. And this is something that you need with drag. That's right, Miss Tommy Ross is legendary. Well, I remember when I first had my first Miss Toronto Continental Pageant prelim here. Tommy Ross was the reigning queen, and I brought her here. We had a good time. We had a good time. She's always gave me nothing but respect. Even though I don't do the contest anymore, she always speaks to me online, says hello. She's either busy, or but she always takes time out to give me pointers about certain things. And I like that. I like queens that don't disconnect themselves from their community. Never dis disconnect yourself from your community. Even though you don't like something somebody did and you don't like them, there's ways about disconnecting yourself from the community but yet still staying attached to where you're informed and you're still a part of it. We're all not gonna, all going to get along. I mean, that's just something that's not going to happen. But we can try. And if you can't get along, just ignore them. <laughs> 
and walk around. Just do your part. It's really important to do your part when you've established yourself in these fabulous contests um, or pageants or whatever it is. It's really important to use that knowledge and that power and that voice that you have when you won that national pageant to put back into the LGBT pronoun community and show the straight people that we are not what they always think of us as, drug addicts, um, prostitutes, and degenerates of society. This is something that's really important that pageants have the ability to do. That's right. You need to be from clean, from head to toe. We know a lot of the girls have baggage. Most of us have baggage. We In the world, we all have baggage of some kind or another. But at, when it comes to the pageant, you need to be pageant ready. So it's great if the divas can help these girls, potential up-and-coming um, pageant queens, including myself, help us with some advice and some tips. Reach out to us. When you see the girls talking about the pageants, Miss Whitney Page was lovely and so personal. She was. She Listen, I remember Whitney, when Whitney Page when she was small, and then she, she became a big, beautiful doll. I remember her throughout her career. I remember seeing her. She was always working. That's a good thing, and that's another thing. The pageants give you the opportunity now to work, to have a voice, and a lot of the queens aren't using that. I know, I, let me tell you something. I know Misty Knight. I performed with Misty Knight um, many, 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 many years ago at a place called the Marlin Beach Hotel. I don't know if you know it in Fort Lauderdale, the Marlin Beach Hotel. We did a show downstairs um, in the disco where you could see um, people swimming in the swimming pool. They had this big glass um, thing, like an aquarium. In the nightclub, and you can see people swimming upstairs in the swimming pool. And uh, we performed at this place, um, the Marlin Beach Hotel. I remember Miss Misty; she was fabulous. She was, listen, she, she was a, a performer, entertainer. She was just fabulous. She always gave one hundred and fifty percent every time, and that's what you have to do in this business, I guess. Um, now, coaching tips. You told us that the girls should be polished from head to toe, that they should focus more on their talent and question and answers, evening gowns, walking, their poise. Yeah, because a lot of the girls, um, not to be mean, a lot of the girls walk very, um, how do you say, um, they're not, they don't walk feminine. They don't walk, well, they walk kind of feminine, but they're not, they, they, I don't know. Like I said before, they seemed rushed in the evening gowns competition to me. So maybe that's why they don't look happy because the majority of the pageants I've seen, the girls don't even have a smile on their face. At least when you watch Miss Universe or Miss World, the girls are smiling, they're happy, they're taking their time. But for some of these other contests, I see all the girls, they just look mad. Maybe it looks like they're looking at people that, they think are saying something negative about what they're wearing. And I see that on a lot of the girls' faces when they're walking out there. I see that uncertainty of, uh-oh, maybe this gown isn't working. Maybe this look isn't working. Yeah, a lot of them have manly walks. They walk like men. They, yeah, they're supposed to be the epitome of a woman. This is what, and then they yet they pick on each other for which one looks like a man, and this one looks like a woman, or that one looks like a man, and that one don't look like them, and the, the cookie cutter concept. But then, when you see them walking and performing, you see this animated manly thing, and yet they have the nerve to talk about the person that um, was just on the stage. It's, oh, I don't know. Most of the girls enter the market to um, promote themselves. Um, their package shows 
That's why they are there. True. It's when when girls want to work and they know they have a true talent and passion for the art of female impersonation, they bring the right um, mentality and concept, and they've done their homework on that system so they know what to bring to the contest. And they don't have, whether or not they don't have a lot of that baggage that's on them, they lose that baggage because their focus is on the contest and winning. And I would just say they want that opportunity because that opportunity is great. Whether you're the winner, your first runner-up or second runner-up, it opens doors for you because you never know who's sitting in the audience. Period. They are learning the supermodel walks like we did in the old days. That's true. Back in the old days, it's strange. Like I, I said this earlier in it in the conversation, the girls, the young girls today, haven't been in the trenches. They don't know what hard work is in this in the pageant business. They don't know what it, they think. Like you said, they think they just because they're fish, they can just walk out there and I've won. Mm -mm. You've got to put some effort into your walk, your talk, all of that. Um, in these contests and if you want to work in this business if you are going to be an entertainer bring it to the stage bring it whether you're doing it by yourself or you're bringing a group of people you make sure that group of people are well behaved to where it benefits you it benefits you all that negative energy you tell them to leave it outside and you be clear when you're telling them to leave that energy outside this way, everything can focus on you and what you want and your dream. Jocelle Stevens is the current Miss Continental Plus, and as an older girl, she would be a lovely person to study for the package. It's up to you on YouTube. Okay, Jocelle Stevens would be great for a lot of the girls to chat with. So, everybody, on the Stephanie Stevens show today, we were talking pageant talk. Um... We got a lot of advice and a lot of tips on what you should focus on. We've heard from the evening gown to the talent to question and answer, interview. We've heard from some of the um, people who have who are great role models in the pageant system. Tommy Ross, Darcel Stevens, Mimi Marks, Tiffany Ariagas, um, Dana Douglas, um, and many others. Um, Freddie Fantasia. Um, Lewis, these people have made a real difference in the pageant system. Alexis Gabrielle Sherrington, I have to mention her because she's just fabulous. And um, a lot of other ones that have made a real difference in our community and continue to make that difference because they are there to educate and to help our movement, to make sure that we stay current and we are fighting for our rights. And this is just something that you as a performer and as a pageant queen, entertainer, or a potential contestant, these are things you these are things and people you have to look up to. So this way you know the right direction to go in. And I always say, I'm never afraid to ask a question. I'm never afraid to perform with anybody. I performed with some of the biggest superstars in the world and I never was afraid. I sat with Cindy Lauper and we drank wine all night and performed at the um at the um the the gay the gay and um the gay pride festival in Montreal. We laughed our asses off, drank and carried on. That was just one of the divas, I can tell you that. And I wasn't nervous at all. It was like it was like my sister. So thank you guys so much for coming on the Stephanie Stevens show today. Today was about pageant talk, getting the advice and tips We've heard from a lot of people about a lot of different um, things that you ladies should focus on. Go back, watch the show. Please share the show with people, so um, with everyone. So this way, a lot of the girls can see what we were talking about today on the show. I want to say thank you guys so much, um, Demetrius and um, Byron and Joey and so many other ones that were on here today giving me your advice on pageantries. So now I have a better idea and clarity on 
on and advice on what I have to do to prepare myself for a contest, um, whether it's th miss this or miss that. Um, so thank you guys so much for joining me here on the Stephanie Stevens Show. You have a great and blessed Saturday week. Hope it looks like we're going to be out of this soon. Um, I'm glad they're doing it slowly. Um, and um, think positive. And we're going to be okay. So hopefully by the end of summer, beginning of next winter, we'll be back to our, our lives. So thank you guys for joining me here on the Stephanie Stevens Show. Today's show was a pageant talk. And I want you guys to have a great and safe week. And whatever pageant you choose to be in, just be fabulous and you. That's it. Just be you. Good night, everybody. Thank you for joining me on the Stephanie Stevens Show. Tomorrow on my show, Live at 5, we will be talking to the LGBT pronoun community about the coronavirus, what, when, where, and who. So, tune in. Thanks, everybody. And y'all have a great week now. Okay? Bye-bye. You're on the Stephanie Stevens Show. I'm the Stephanie Stevens Show. You're on the Stephanie, the Stephanie, the Stephanie Stevens Show, y'all. Mm -hmm. Get yourself. Bye, everybody. Be sure your package is consistent. And on that note, good night.